Okay. Good morning. And good morning, my brother. Yeah, good, good morning. We exactly. haven't shared the same platform for some time now. And good morning to Cherry viewers. And most importantly, the good people of Tamale Central. Uh, I will begin by saying that he knows in the heart of his heart that Ghanaians are going to suffer for the decisions taken by this government. I am not an economist, neither do I have a finance background. He does. And he knows that the very investors whose monies are going to be lost in terms of value are the investors who have engaged people in terms of employment and jobs. This same government is preaching to the people of this country that the private sector is the engine for growth. And the MPP started preaching this not today. Even when President Kufo won the elections in 2000, it has always been their mantra. Now you come and you tell the people of this country that there will be no haircut. Mind you, there will be no haircut was a statement that was legendarily made by the president. The same there will be no haircut was a statement made by the deputy minister for finance, my good friend, Dr. John Kuma, on the floor of parliament. And plethora of MPP communicators went to town with that same argument. It is very clear that there will be haircut. Now they are telling us that the principals are not going to, to suffer. Your principals are not going to suffer. However the case is, if I invest 100,000 Ghana cities, you keep my 100,000 Ghana cities, you pay me the 100,000 Ghana cities within a period of 15 years, and that 100,000 Ghana cities you pay at an interest that I never agreed to in the first place. Mm. That was not the interest I agreed yeah. to be paid. Because you have mismanaged the economy as a result of your reckless policy interventions. Now that 100,000 Ghana cities juxtapose that with the level of inflation. Inflation today is more than 40%. Inflation today is more than 40%. I want to ask my brother to sincerely tell me that what will that 100,000 Ghana cities do in 15 years, taking into consideration the inflation, the loss of value of our domestic currency against the other foreign currency? What will that 100,000 Ghana cities do in 15 years? Clearly. And he says that, yes, we are in a global economic challenges. And when we are pointing out to him that he should shelf this bogus argument of the fact that it's a global trend. No. Our problem is recklessness. Our problem is corruption. Our problem is thievery. To some extent, it's beyond even corruption. That is why we are where we are. Now, why would you be doing this, telling us that we should support this government when you are unwilling to listen to us, when you are unwilling to listen to civil society organizations academia, and ordinary Ghanaians who are telling you to cut the size of your government. Why are you unwilling to listen to us? Because, you see, you cannot tell me that I should tighten my belt. When you have all gathered at the Flagstaff House, you are not only removing your belt, you are removing the belt hooks. That is what they are doing. You are removing the belt hooks. So if you don't even have a belt hook, you can't be contemplating having belts. Yet you tell the ordinary Ghanaian to tighten his belt. The reason why we are where we are it's mismanagement. The reason why we are where we are is because our debts are at a level that cannot be managed. Debt to GDP is over 100%. I shared platforms with my brother. When they were in government, debt to GDP, which was around 60%, you said President Mahama was incompetent. You said this was unheard of. Before we base. Yes. And you, that was even before yeah, before we base. You said this was unheard of. You said that this government needed to, these people not even, not to be given any opportunity to govern this country. Today, over 100%, you think that you are telling us on the same platform that we should all support government. Look, there is something in the Grand Week, one in the, in the local palace, when the local women go to fetch water. They call it Mabu. That's how the women called it. You fetch the water. For you to ask someone to help you carry the water, you have to raise the water to your knee. And that's what they do. If you go to the riverside, the one, the one who wants to be helped will carry the water, lift the water to the knee before anybody can help you to carry it. You are unwilling to even touch the, the basin. You are unwilling to even touch the, 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 the container with the water. Which is... And, which is you, are not, you are not willing to, to even reduce... Right. You are not even willing to reduce the size of your government. You are not willing to do that. When people have pointed out to you that the size is a contributory factor to where we are because government expenditure is ballooning. You are not willing to do that. You have created all manner of secretariat. Can you imagine you have, you have one D1F secretariat 
something that can be done by the Ministry of Trade with the technical people. I have worked there as a deputy minister. Can you imagine you have Secretariat for Free SHS when it can be done by the Ministry of Education? We have Secretariat, a cathedral. You have Secretariat. I mean, clearly, the list said about this thing. Cathedral. I'm saying that he's saying that we have a cathedral. The unnecessary expenses that you put on the people of this country. Now, if you all agree, if you all agree, Hussaini, relax. if you all agree, we are where we are because of our debt, the ballooning debt. If you all agree because government expend here, way, way at waste government's revenue. If you all agree. Now, people are suggesting to you, reduce the size of your government. Reduce that size. You are unwilling to listen to them. Yet you come on this program, and you are telling us that we should all support. For we to support you, to carry your water, you have to mama, you have to raise the water to your knee before we can help you carry it. You are unwilling to do that. It has to be complimentary. Absolutely. I love it. You are unwilling. You are unwilling to do that. Then stop this. You, you are unwilling. You are no, leave him. You are unwilling. <laughs> you are unwilling to do that. And you expect the people of this country. to look, him, We all admit. Spoke that look, look, and and and. Let's make this point very clear. When he said that the, the problems we have in terms of the depreciation of our CD, in terms of the, the economic, you know, quagmire that your... your he says your, they are global. Income, please, why is it that our neighboring countries are not suffering the way we are suffering? I will tell no, you. Hold on. Why is it that Togo is not suffering the way we are I suffering? I will tell you. Why is it that Burkina is not suffering the way we are suffering? Why COVID hit all of us? I will tell you why. Was Ghana the only country that was hit I by will COVID? Tell you why. Ghana was not the only country that was hit by COVID. As, as a matter of fact, all those countries are our neighbors. None of them went to the IMF to borrow $3 billion in the name of COVID. None of them. As a matter of fact, Burkina went for $20 million. None of our neighbors went to the World Bank to borrow about $906 million. None of them. None of our neighbors dip their hands into all manner of funds established by their predecessors for the purposes of COVID. None of them went to their central bank to request 10 billion, ended up borrowing 20 billion. None of them. And in any case, all the monies you have borrowed, you could not even account for them. When we raise the issue, you say that we have managed COVID than our neighbors. That is another lie. In fact, if you check, because the World Bank praised Ghana for how we manage COVID, I checked. World Bank praised Nigeria. They praise Burkina, sorry, the World Health Organization. Praise Nigeria. They praise Togo. They praise all of them. And in any case, some of them even gave free rents. Senegal is a classical example. And if you look at the number of people who lost their lives, and this argument, they've gone to town, and I know he may come to that. They said, oh, fewer people died in Ghana. That's another lie. If you look at the number of people who died in Ghana, juxtapose that number in terms of percentages, you would come to one conclusion, that more people died in Ghana than they died in Togo. Well, the argument more, was that we did more testing. Why? If you do more testing, it means that you should prevent more people from dying. If you do more testing, as a result of the test, you'll be able to treat people. Well, if so, you do so, more testing, you get to know the number of people no, who I'm, are ill. No, I'm not talking about those who are ill. I'm, talk, I'm not talking about those who are infected. I'm talking about lives lost. Now, if you do more testing, you should be able to, to know more people who are infected by it. And it means that a country that couldn't do more testing, mm. it means that more people should die as a result of this. So I'm simply saying that who even told you that we did more testing than them? And in any case, how best could you manage COVID than preventing lives being lost? In Nigeria, 3,255 plus people died. In Ghana, 1,456 people died. Now, juxtapose the Nigeria figure. If you look at the raw figure, more people died in Nigeria than in Ghana. But their population But is juxtapose higher. it with the population. Even if, if you want to calculate it by 230 million people, you would have had about 0.006% of Nigerians dying. Now, calculate ours by 32 million or even 30 million. You would have about 0.05% of, of, of Ghanaians dying as a result of COVID. So in, in Togo, 255 people died as a result of COVID. Juxtapose it with 8, 000, 8, 8 million people. So you would come to one conclusion. And the conclusion is that more people died in Ghana than they died in Nigeria, than they died in Senegal. When the president had the opportunity to address the nation, instead of he you know, apologizing to us, he said, oh, if you look at even the inflation, the inflation in Nigeria, I was, I was increased that, that uh, uh, Togo, in fact, he, he made mention of Togo, he made mention of, 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 of uh, Senegal, he made mention of uh, one other 
Togo 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 he made mention of Burkina mm. and, and I'm saying that he said that that there, there has been several folds of increases inflation in those countries and in Ghana we had only five folds in fact he said that Togo had about 15 folds uh, uh, Senegal had about 11 folds and in Ghana only three folds that was deceptive three folds at what rate no, no, five folds at what rate? When we check, the inflation in those countries, ours is the highest. Look, what is the level of joblessness? As we see today, the unemployment rate, you took it from 6.8% to 17.4, the last count by the statistical service. In fact, youth unemployment, you took it from 44% to about 12.6% about, about, uh, per the 2022 financial statement. So you have mismanaged the economy. You haven't achieved anything. And I've said, if good speeches, sugar-coated when we were in Sunday school, those of us who attended Sato schools, sugar-coated speeches, if that was what was being used to rate the performance of every president, President Nanado would have been the president of the world. He speaks sweet, he speaks much, and delivers absolutely nothing. Nothing is working in this country. And the idea of the depreciation of the city, what has that got to do with Ukraine? When you are spending over $2 billion in the importation of rice and poultry products in this country, when you took it from $500 million from President Mahama, from $500 million to over $2 billion, how wouldn't, why wouldn't your dollar, your city, lose its value against the other foreign currency? And it is not for nothing that in 2014, we had a reduction. Why? You don't spend city anymore. Huh? You are saying my, your city. You your government, passing. because you have messed up the city. Why wouldn't I say your city? You have messed it up. And the facts, you, like can, you can contest those figures. Mm. Is it not a fact that to the, you took to the, it from to the, 500 to million dollars? To the point dollars. that in the 2023 budget, our uh, import bill is up to $10 billion. We are, we are doomed. We are no, doomed. No, no. So, 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 my brother, it has nothing to do with global economic trend. It has to do with incompetence. It has to do with corruption. It has to do with sometimes outright thievery. And it has to do with reckless policy interventions. And all this recklessness you have been pointed out to, not just NDC. Because any time you raise a legitimate concern, they say it's an NDC, they reduce it to an NDC MPP ball game. It is not an NDC ball game. Civil society organizations, you have participated in post-budget workshops before. We told you about this, 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 this Momo tax. We told you. We told you that this thing was not going to work. The, all the experts who came to the post-budget workshop told you that it wasn't going to well, work. Well, they always blame the NDC Everybody, side of parliament. Why? The, you see, when they had, you know, Central University, the university that made their auditorium available to Dr. Baume to engage in the voodoo economics. Oh, absolutely. They did, they did a survey. Over 90% of the people of this country well, said they were, why? Why are you now the time, the umpire? Over 90% of the people who responded to the survey by Central University. Your, the university that gave you the opportunity to do that voodoo economics, Dr. Baumia, said they were against e -Levy. In fact, multimedia conducted a survey and over 90% said they were against e -Levy. He said, said e -Levy was not going to help us. Professor Alina Chan said e -Levy was not going to help us. CDD said e -Levy was, not, was not going to help us. Every single Imani, every single civil society organization who do not have any association with the NBC. And in fact, if they had friends, their friends are the MPP. Fuseni. They all spoke against the e-levy. You refuse to listen. Fuseni, now, sir. the minister just went there and the, decided and it, decided that they are reducing it to 1%. But, but let me just conclude on uh, this. Have you seen the statement issued by the minister? Yes, I have. He issued the statement not on the letterhead of the Minister of Finance. What's, he, what's hold on. He is explaining what was captured in the budget. Mm. He read the budget for and on behalf of the president. I'm saying what's wrong with that? There is everything wrong with that. He's not a law to himself. He read the budget for and on behalf of the president. That's why the preamble of the budget says, I'm reading it for and on behalf of the president. You are given the opportunity, or you created an opportunity to explain to the people of this country. So your, your only problem is that it was not on a letterhead. A lot of the things captured in the budget statement, and you do it on just in a letter, without a letterhead. He said a law to himself. Someone told me that this minister is not just the minister for finance. He's the president. Mm.